Hello everyone, it's Santiago. Today we are going to have an important lesson, so please keep watching if you are really interested in learning more about English teaching process. Let's get started. Well, first of all, I'm going to talk about how to teach an English topic using one of the language teaching methodologies. And in this lesson, we are going to focus on present perfect continuous tense. But before, I would like to talk to you guys about my method of teaching, I mean direct method. Probably you as a student you already heard before about this method, which is important to me because it helps a lot to my students to improve their oral skill. And also, the most important thing is that it's focused on the base of any language learning process. Pronunciation. Let me fill you in more about it. Sometimes pronunciation is marginalized in English classes. Teachers are not giving importance to teaching pronunciation and it must be a skill that must be taught and developed in order for students to achieve phonetic competence as part of their communicative competence. So basically guys, direct method starts from the principle that the second language can be learned directly, like the first, and even faster. To do this, the second language is taught using the same language that is learned as a teaching vehicle, that is without resorting to the first language. In this method, grammar is taught undoubtedly. The learner should figure it out the rule through the examples given by the teacher. Here, speaking is first before reading and writing, and there is emphasis on good pronunciation. Teachers and learners are partners in the classroom as well, so they are in constantly interaction. Now, I'm going to mention the most important techniques of this method. The first one is self-correction. When the student makes a mistake, the teacher will offer them a second chance by giving them a choice. For example, if the student says, I have been learning English for three years, I would say, have you been learning English for three years or three years? Or repeat the learner's mistake in order to signal that something was wrong. The second one is conversation practice. Teachers ask students a number of questions and the student should be able to answer correctly. Also, students can ask their own questions to the other students or to the other teacher. Generally, we use pantomime, real-life objects, and other visual materials to explain and to learn in the classroom. On the other hand, whenever I talk about this method, I like to share the opinion from the teacher in foreign languages, Tania Silverio Perez, which I think it's important to this method. She tells us in one of her articles about pronunciation that the writing language is a sovereign conquest of men. In the process of teaching the language, you have to keep in mind that writing language is a derivative art which will best fulfill its job the more nourished and vigorous is the spoken tongue, which is its basic model. Now, how could I teach present perfect continuous tense according to this method? Let me show you how I would teach this topic and how I would put this topic into practice with my students. Well, in the classes, when I explain, I like to show visual materials about the topic that we are studying because it helps 
To my students, remember and understand information easier. First of all, I would have to say that present perfect continuous tense has two uses. The first one is, we use present perfect continuous tense to show that something started in the past and has continued up until now. For five minutes, for two weeks, for three hours, since Friday, are all durations which can be used with present perfect continuous. Let me show you something. So, as you can see, I have this picture. And first of all, I would ask to my student what the girl in the picture has been doing or what can they see in this picture because I need to listen their opinions. My students would answer me and if they are not right, I would correct them immediately. So what can we see? One of my students could say, I can see an angry girl on her bed and other student could say, I can see that she's trying to sleep because she, she still has her mind going or something like that, I would say yes, but how will be the sentence? If you see this line, this blue line, it is covering part of the past side and it is also ubicated in the present. We can say that the correct sentence for this picture is she has been trying to sleep for half an hour or for, for two hours or for three hours and as I said before if you see this line the action started in the past and has continued up until now even in the picture you can see it and also we have to repeat the sentence because remember we are studying pronunciation as well and in this sentence, most of the time, we could mess up in the pronunciation of the word sleep. Why? Because when a word starts with S, it may be difficult to pronounce the S sound for a Spanish speaker. We usually pronounce words like student, stop, snake, with an E before S, so they sound like S student, S stop, S snake, and that imaginary E always comes out, but that's because we don't have that sound in Spanish, so we have to be careful. There's no E. Anyway, I would say to my students that I would have to make a snake sound. I mean, extend the sound at the beginning of the word and we will get it. Let's go ahead with the second use. Express an action that started in the past and has just ended. Usually you can see a result in the present. And here I have another picture. So what could we say? If you see the blue line it is not in the present, it's behind, it is in the past side, it is almost in the present but that's because the action just ended. One of my students could say, I can see a woman in the picture, she looks exhausted and she is remembering that she was like checking or correcting at sand or a test and this example she has just finished correcting therefore the action has just finished presently and there is a result which is that she's tired what about this picture my students could say we can see a man holding a basket of cherries so the action is over and how will be the sentence he has been picking cherries. In this example, 
the result is the basket of cheerios and the action of picking them has just finished so as you can see i am using visual materials and these pictures i found them on a platform to learn english called Legoland. You can find the explanation of any English topic there. Now I'm going to talk about the strategies to practice in class. I would like to use funny strategies because we can interact and help each other. And these strategies that I'm going to show you, I found them on the website www.teach-desk.com Inside it, you can find fun and engaging English as a foreign language activities, games, and worksheets. Trust me, you're going to find good strategies. For example, this game. Let me show you what it is. So, as you can see, it's a game where students, with the help of some dice and some game cheats, that identify them, they must go through the whole way from the beginning to the end and they have to answer according to the idea inside in each space. So here we have an activity focused on the present perfect continuous tense and in this way they put into practice what they have learned. On the other hand, in this game students take it in turns to do a mime and other students guess what the person has been doing. I would divide the students into two teams A and B. A student from team A comes to the front of the class. Give the student a mime card like this one for example here we have a sentence and next to the sentence we have a small picture of a teacher. The sentence says, you've been teaching English to the class. Then the student asks the class, what have I been doing? The student then has two minutes to act the sentence on the card to his or her team. During these two minutes, the members of Team A can ask the student questions about what he or she has been doing, to which the student cannot yes or no. If Team A guesses the sentence correctly, in the allotted time, they score two points. If they don't guess the sentence or time runs out, it's Team B's turn to answer. If Team B guesses correctly, they score one point. Then a student from Team B comes to the front of the class and the game continues in the same way. The team with the most points at the end of the game wins. Here I have another activity. This present perfect continuous activity helps students develop their conversation skills. Give each pair of students a set of cards, which they shuffle something like this and place face down. One student starts the conversation by saying, Hi, what have you been doing? Then the other student picks up a card, reads the sentence, and replies using the present perfect continuous tense. For example, this one says, I've been busy searching. What is the complement? We can say, I've been busy searching for a new apartment. Then the other student shows interest and asks appropriate follow-up questions to keep the conversation going. When the conversation is over, the students swap roles and make a new conversation with the next card. 
all this process continues in the same way until all the cards have been used. I always use these kind of strategies because they are very dynamic and fun for my students. Also, they are thinking in English at all times and they enjoy the process. In addition, in strategies that I showed you, mainly we practice speaking. So as I listen to my student, I can correct pronunciation mistakes. Around the academic period, I would evaluate to my students to analyze how the learning process is going. I normally evaluate all the skills, but speaking has a special value. Well, I would use speaking tests mainly, taking into account present perfect continuous tense by asking different questions to each one and they will have to answer with good pronunciation. It's not necessary a native pronunciation. The important thing is that you understand their answers clearly. For the writing exam, I would ask my students to write a story using the present perfect continuous tense a certain number of times. I mean, they have to put present perfect continuous sentences in the story, but that story must have coherence. Listening and reading would be evaluated in one day with activities such as filling in the gaps on a text according to the audio and the other activity would be a paragraph or a tale that I would give them and they should read it aloud with good pronunciation, both taking into account present perfect continuous. Also, I would like to talk about the strategies that can help the students that are below the group level. Firstly, I would make tutorials or classes apart, especially for those students maybe during weekends or between classes if they want it. Secondly, to improve speaking, I would organize a debate club where we would talk about interesting topics and we would do readings to improve pronunciation and at the same time speaking because we would have a great discussion about our readings. On the other hand, and the most important, is to motivate them to continue with the learning of the English language, supporting them and saying that it's not impossible, that they will not only learn it, they will have a better future as well. This is all for now. Thank you so much guys for watching. If this was your first time here, don't forget to click subscribe button down below and please give me a thumbs up if you really enjoyed this video. Until next time.